Today is the day you solve all your smelting needs. Whether you need a ton of glass or to smelt a bunch of copper and iron for mining, these four simple automatic furnace systems are incredibly easy to make and will make it so you spend less time waiting and more time building and exploring in your worlds. Let's go. All right, so today we're here to talk about furnace systems and smelting. And before we get started, you should know there's three different types of furnaces. Most of you probably do know, but you got the normal furnace. This can smelt anything. And every smelt that you do takes 10 seconds to complete every item. And then you have the blast furnace, which will smelt any ores that you get. So think iron ore, copper ore, all of the metals, basically. It will smelt those down and it takes only five seconds to complete. So it smelts in half of the time as this guy while using the same amount of fuel. And then you also have the smoker. The smoker, just like this, will smoke or smelt or cook whatever you want to say, only one category of item, and that is foods. So anything that falls into the food category, think potatoes and um, potatoes. <laughs> I can't think of anything else. Kelp. Um, there's a few things that you could put in here. Oh, all of the meats, maybe. Um, good job, Prowl. They can all be put into here, and they will smelt every five seconds for one item as well. Now, today, we're going to be specifically just working with this guy, the normal furnace. You can use any of the other ones with this as well. Just keep in mind that it does become a kind of one purpose system at that point, but to each their own. You do the way you like to do it. Let's start with this guy right here though. Okay, our builds today, they're not gonna look pretty, but they're going to function. So let's say you have yourself a furnace and you've been doing things the old fashioned way of just dropping in things to smelt and then manually taking them out. It's time to speed this process up for you a lot because the first furnace system here is as easy as it gets. Anybody can do this within the first several you know minutes of their world. Once you find iron, basically you're good to go. Place a chest right here, place a hopper facing into that chest like that. That, go to the top, face a hopper down, put a chest on top of that, put a hopper in the side, put a chest on top of that. What happens now? Let me show you. Get what you need to smelt. Let's say you've got some iron that you would like to smelt down and get yourself a fuel. You probably have yourself a little bit of coal, right? You could go ahead, throw your coal in here, throw your iron up here, and then as you get it, you could just keep adding to the system. Let's say I also found some copper and a little bit of gold. I could go ahead and I could throw these things in here as well. I've gone in, I found myself a little bit more coal. I'm gonna throw that in too. And as you can see, it is all filling into the system here and being automatically put out into this chest. It's a little slow, but it's convenient. You no longer have to sit and manually pick things in and out. It all goes through the system super easy, comes out for you automatically. It's that simple, folks. It is that simple. And remember, I just threw ores in here, but if you got some meat, let's say you got yourself a little bit of beef you wanna put in there as well, go ahead and throw it in. It's gonna be able to smelt and do all of that. But next, let's say this, while it works, it's a little slow, right? Let's say you want more, and more is always better. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna place two chests right here. We're gonna place a hopper and a hopper into that chest. We're gonna put a furnace and a furnace. We're gonna do the same thing we did over there actually, where we're going to put these guys here and we're gonna put two more in the back right here. So now you've taken what you had right there and you've effectively doubled it. Now, this is doing the same thing as that, but two times faster. Okay, so let's say you now want more furnaces. Um, you could do a little bit more, you could do a lot more. That part's gonna be up to you. But um, once you start getting over four furnaces, going this route is not really feasible anymore. So I'm gonna show you a way that you can make an automatic furnace system that can do probably up to about 70 furnaces with this. Let me show you how it can work. We're gonna go with something a more reasonable size. We're gonna say eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And we'll put furnaces on all these. But the, that's... That's not working for you at all. How long is he going to do this? Okay, that was awkward. Uh, moving on, put hoppers on top of each one of these. And I think eight's a pretty good number. I think that's a reasonable amount that a lot of people can think, even if you you know don't really get into smelting a ton of things, like eight's going to save you a lot of time, even if you just have a stack of items that you want to smelt, right? So up here, uh, we're going to go two blocks over and two blocks over. Over here, we're going to go over one, up one, over one, up one like this. 
All right, so what we're gonna wanna do is uh, go rail. This is gonna be temporary, but we do need the temporary rail there. So powered rail, regular rail, and do powered rail all the way across until you get to right here, regular rail, powered rail, and temporary rail. And the reason that we're doing that is so our rails don't accidentally connect together when we start connecting down this bottom area. So powered rail, regular rail, powered rails all the way across like this, regular rail and powered rail. Get rid of your two temporary rails there. Put a block up here and a block up here. And then actually this guy right here, we need to make that a slab. So here, I'm just gonna temporarily put this back real quick. Put a top half slab right here. Put this back, get rid of this. And there, we do that because we're gonna end up putting chest mine carts back here. This guy and this guy. And if we do it this way, we can actually easily reach both chests. So now we wanna come back over to this side. We are going to power both of these rails. We could do it just like that, works fine. We're gonna keep those on all the time. Uh, we're gonna put a couple back here. We're not gonna turn those on yet. And we need to power both of these sets of rails. We could just set a solid block up here, power it, and we're good to go. It's gonna be that easy. So now I have eight rails that are going back and forth. We need a little bit of storage, don't we? Uh, let's go ahead and we'll just keep it simple. We'll run everything to uh, one set of chests. So we'll put the chest here, come around to the back, face those in, and then come this way and come this way. So now what's gonna happen is this mine cart is gonna go back and forth. The hoppers are going to suck up all of the goodies inside. It's going to put it all inside of these furnaces. And then once the items smelt, they're gonna make their way down and in. So as you can see, I could go over here, we can get some fuel, Whatever that fuel source is, we'll just grab some coal since that's going to be the most common thing you guys will use. We'll put you know all of our coal in here. We, let's say we went mining, we got a lot of coal. And then let's say we want to get ourselves a lot of stone to build with, right? Maybe you're making this in early games. You could very easily make this in early game. Maybe you don't have silk touch yet. You want a way to get a lot of regular stone for a build that you're doing. So do all your cobblestone. Again, this could be any smeltable item and it doesn't matter what it is. We could flick this lever. As you can see, it's putting all of our fuel in. We could flick this lever. And as you can see, they all cut on. That's gonna keep going back and forth nonstop until you decide to turn it off. And it will evenly distribute all of the smeltable items in, as you can see. And then they all come out down here. So now you are currently going eight times faster than you were with a single furnace down there. And it was really easy to make. Only took us maybe about five minutes. You're gonna have to get yourself, you know, some hoppers and some rails. So it is a little bit more expensive, but it is very simple for anybody to do. Like I said, you can expand this. So just for the sake of an example, let me show you the largest that it can go. So this right here, if I calculated right, this should be the maximum size that you can do without the furnaces eventually stopping and having even just a little bit of time to where they're not smelting something. Because anytime that a furnace is not actively smelting something, the fuel that you have in it is still burning, so you're wasting fuel. So technically you can make it bigger, but you'll end up wasting fuel and it's a waste of your time. You're not gonna get the maximum speed out of it. Um, and then you can see on the back here, we've had to run all of our hoppers to a few different chests because if you do it too fast or too many uh, hoppers going to a chest, the hoppers will get backed up. They can't move the items fast enough for how fast they're being smelted. And I think I've calculated that out about right too. So what we'll do is we'll send off our fuel and then maybe we came back from a trip and we have a lot of stuff that we want to smelt down. A whole like chest worth of stuff, that takes a while. Even for something like this, you gotta wait a long time, right? So what we'll do is we'll come over here, we'll send this guy off on its way. And first of all, is this not satisfying? It's very satisfying. Um, as it goes all the way down, it works its way all the way back. And now we are getting smelted items without any sort of possible waste. I can go ahead and look in here and just watch how fast it's pouring in. This is exactly what you want because in no time, although we would probably if we made something like this in real time, we'd probably find a quicker way or easier way to get all of our items out of it. That way we don't have to travel between all of these chests, but this is just a very simple example for you. And maybe this is all you need. And if you need something more complex than this, I'm sure you could figure out a uh, better way 
to get all of your items together um, and put them all in one location. But this is absolutely fast and awesome. But the problem with something like this, it's not very space efficient, is it? So keeping with the same theme, these are all the same type, right? So this one, this one, maybe you want this to go into an area that looks a little bit better or just laid out. Let's say laid out a little bit better and we won't even do all 78 whatever furnaces uh, we will uh, do a few less, but I just want to show you how you can lay something like this out. If you're enjoying today's video, help it get discovered by more people by clicking the like button and leaving a comment. Also, if you enjoy my videos, click the subscribe button, join my Discord channel, and become a channel member by clicking the join button. Members get awesome perks, including access to my members only Minecraft servers. Now, back to the video. And here is another example where all we've done is we've just made the tracks kind of go around. Instead of in a straight line, I got myself eight, eight and eight. So that's 24 furnaces here in a nice compact area. It's easy to get to everything. And then the mine carts, we don't have to just leave them up top. You can kind of run them wherever you want. So maybe I would want them a little bit more ground level like this, right? So I got fuel in this one. I'll go ahead and send that guy off and just leave that turned on. I have some potatoes that I want to bake up in this one for food. I'll go ahead and turn that on. And as you can see, oh. Can we? Thank you. <laughs> Remember to power everything. There we go. So now we have potatoes, bacon, and all of these. And as you'll see, they'll start to work their way into here. And there we go. They're dumping their way in. And it's just going to be a constant flow. So in the amount of time that it's taken me to do this, I've already gotten myself a half stack of potatoes. Okay, so for this next bit, we're going to take automatic to a new level because up until this point, automatic has meant that you need to turn this on and off. You turn this on and off. So you can't just leave it running or the, the mine carts. They're just going to keep going forever. It's, it's a little annoying. So we're going to take automatic to a new level here. Now, like with this one and some of the ones in the past that we've done, you can kind of lay out the furnaces more or less however you want to. And for the most part, all the same rules are going to apply. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to build myself something kind of similar to this, where we have 24 furnaces. I am going to space them out a little bit more, mostly for the aesthetics, not because it's going to matter functionally. So let's go ahead and let's set up 24 furnaces. OK, so I got myself a little area set up. We've done absolutely nothing different to this point than what we've done over there. All we did was we just set up our furnaces where we wanted to and we created some railways exactly the same way we did before with one exception. Actually, well, kind of like we did over there, we decided to just bring our rails down to ground level. That's it. OK, so here's just a good look around just to make sure nobody is confused about what we've done so far. Now, here's where the changes come in. So we're going to go ahead and put a powered rail on each end here. This one right here, you can see is where our items are going to get smelted. And as you can see here, this is where our fuel is going to go. You don't have to have them on opposite sides. I think it lays out a little bit better that way, but it's up to you in terms of what you want to do. So we got powered rail, powered rail. We're going to put a regular rail, a regular rail, and then we're going to use something called a detector rail. So we're going to put a detector rail right here, a detector rail right here, and then we're just going to connect the rest of it up. Um, anytime you have a bend, you can't use a powered rail. So we're just going to use a regular rail there. And then on this side, just get us a little bit extra boost. I'm going to put a powered rail right here and then put the turn right there. And we just we can just power this in whatever way. It doesn't matter. So here's the part that does matter. We want to detect any time a minecart goes over top of this and it has an item in it. So first of all, you can see if I put a comparator out, which is going to read this minecart. You can see when the minecarts on it, it doesn't see anything. This is not lit up. If it has even one item in it, it has a signal. It can tell that there's an item inside of the cart. We are going to use this to make sure that this cart keeps moving for as long as it has things in it. Whenever all of its items are gone, it's going to stop. How do we do that? We want to make it to where I'm going to leave an item in here. OK, we want to make it to where whenever this thing has an item inside of it, this rail is turned on. So. We're going to come out with a repeater because this signal is only strong enough to go one one redstone signal over whenever there's one item left. We want to make sure that even if there's only one item left, that this signal can go as far as we need it to go. So we're going to use a repeater here. That's going to make the signal strong, make it go as far as we need it to. What we're going to do is we're going to come over this way like this. And we're going to put a solid block right here and another repeater right here. We're just going to go ahead and put this just at a one tick setting right now. We're going to put it on four and then what you'll see is if we now have items in here, it sends it back off. And I tried to break it and I failed. And what? Why are you here? 
No wandering traders were harmed in the making of this video. Okay, so are we all good? Almost. We don't have a way to send this thing off. So what we could do is we can go ahead and just put a block above it like this right here would be fine. Put a button here, press it. It sends it off. It's going to go up. It's going to go around. It's going to make its way back. And since there's no items inside of it, it's just going to stop right there again, which is perfect. That's what we want to do. But I have one more thing for you. What if this thing has items in it, but I want it to stop because I want to add more items to it. And if I don't have a way to stop it myself, it's just going to keep on going. Maybe I need to add something, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a lever, not a redstone dust, a lever right here. I'm going to run redstone dust, redstone dust, and a repeater. A lot of people don't know this, but if you run a repeater, into the side of another repeater it stops it from working that means that if we have a redstone signal going here this repeater does not work what that means is if there's items in here when it goes over this detector rail that signal is not going to make its way over this thing is going to stop i'm going to show you the whole thing here once i get this other side set up which is done the exact same way okay both sides are set up i need to know what each side does right this side is for items to smelt Oh, that's not a sign. Melt items. And this is fuel. Okay, so now we know what goes on what side, right? So let's actually get some things in here. Let's pop over here. Let's grab ourselves some coal. Let's go over here and let's get ourselves a bunch of sand. We need a lot of glass, right? For some reason, we need plenty of glass. So we'll go ahead. We'll throw all of our sand in here. We'll turn this on. And off it goes. It is now filling all of them up with fuel. You'll see it's going to make its way back over and it's going to get detected here. It turns that on. It sends it back out. Let's do this side as well. Hit the button. Off it goes. All of our furnaces are lighting up. It's going to make its way back over. It's going to send itself back off again. Now, let's say, oh, I really want to add some more sand to this or even better. Let's say I need to smelt myself some um, raw iron that I picked up, right? So if I did not have this switch in, I would you know, be waiting for this thing to come back. And then I, I got no way to stop it. It takes off again, right? And it automatically closes itself. So I flip my lever here. I wait for it to come back over. I add in my iron that I wanted to smelt to. Flip this lever back, turn it back on. You can see that's turned off, right? And it's good to go. And I can come over here and I can get all my items that are being smelted nice and quickly. And you can even decorate something like this to make it look pretty cool, honestly. And as you're about to see, I spent a few minutes, nothing too special, too crazy, but I wanted to show you how you could take something like this and make it look really cool. This is the outside. I left everything exposed so you guys can have the world download later and easily be able to still go around and see everything from here. But the inside, not too shabby, right? Not too shabby. So I would come in here. I would put my items in that I want to smelt. Go ahead. Let's throw our cobblestone in here. Let's go over here. Let's get some more fuel going in this chest right here. Let's press our button. Let's press our button. And then as you can see, it all turn on and we get to see our minecart going around, which is kind of fun and kind of cool as well. So really cool way to set up a room like this and have yourself a good looking smelter room. We got all of our items dropping in that we're smelting nice and quickly. You could easily make more storage for this if you want to. Um, and of course, there are a lot larger, more complex, even more so automatic systems where you can load chests and chests or shulkers is full of items at a time. That's not what this tutorial was about. I wanted to show you guys four easy ways that you can make furnace systems that would be simple to do in pretty much any world. Let's flip our lever here because I want to get back into this guy just to show you guys one more time that final piece of functionality. As you can see, our cart stopped. We want to send it off again. Bam, bam. Thank you, ma'am. All good to go. And everything inside looks nice and seamless too. I love the look of this place especially with the new mud bricks. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, go ahead, click a like button, subscribe to the channel, consider leaving a donation on the video or becoming a YouTube member. And don't forget to leave a comment down below to help make sure that those YouTube algorithms work in our favor. The world download will be available in the description below. So make sure you check that out and I'll see you next time.